So the hamstrings are easily one of the most underrated muscle groups and will make a big impact when it comes to giving your lower body that stronger, more powerful look, not to mention literally making you physically stronger and more powerful. But unfortunately, a lot of lifters end up under training these muscles, either by flat out neglecting them in their workouts or by selecting the wrong exercises and executing them with poor technique. So in today's video, we'll be going over five mistakes to avoid when performing leg curls, which should be a staple movement in any well-rounded hamstring plan to directly target that knee flexion component, which is one of their primary functions along with hip extension. Now, most of you watching this are hopefully already aware of the basics like avoiding excessive body momentum and not aggressively swinging your torso all over the place on each rep, controlling the negative on the way down, and using a reasonable range of motion as opposed to just loading up a ton of weight and pumping out a bunch of sad little half reps. So what we're going to cover today are a few slightly more subtle mistakes you might not even realize you're making, but that will definitely help to improve the effectiveness of the exercise so that you can achieve those thick, chunky, voluminous hamstrings you're after in the most efficient way. All right, mistake number one is going to be exploding out of the very bottom position. So lowering down until your knees are fully straightened and then launching the pad up as hard and fast as you possibly can. Now, the reason why this isn't ideal for the hamstrings is because it's actually the calves that are doing the majority of the work in the lowest portion of the range. The gastrocnemius not only performs plantar flexion like with a calf raise, but it's also a pretty powerful knee flexor as well. And it's going to be in the strongest position to move the weight during the first 15 degrees or so of a leg curl. So if your knees are fully straightened at the bottom and then you aggressively drive the weight upward with full force, what you'll be doing is initiating the movement with your calves and then allowing some of that momentum to carry the pad through the upper portion of the range. So what you can do instead if you really want to hone in on the hamstrings as much as possible is either just cut out that first 15 degrees or so at the bottom and start with your knees slightly bent or you can fully straighten your knees but start the movement under more strict control with a slightly slower cadence and then once you get to that roughly 15 degree point, then you can really apply that full force and curl the weight up more explosively using your hamstrings. Mistake number two has to do with improper bracing, and that could look something like this, or like this, or maybe like this. It's important to remember that as you're curling the pad up, the weight is also going to be pulling your body backward at the same time, and so you need to have a counter force in place, otherwise you're going to be leaking out strength and your hamstrings won't be able to generate maximum force against the resistance. This is why it's really important that you firmly hold onto the handles of the machine at all times and actively engage your core to create that force in the other direction and to keep your pelvis pinned down against the machine. If your torso is moving forward and backward on each rep, or your pelvis is excessively rising and lowering, then the overall output from your hand strings is going to be reduced. To put it simply, if it looks like you're having intercourse with the machine during your set, you're probably doing it wrong. Mistake number three, a pretty simple one, but still a fairly common mistake, and that's not having the knees directly matched up with the axis of rotation on the machine. If your knees are too far forward or backward, then the path of resistance won't be properly lined up with the curling path of the hamstrings, and you're going to get all kinds of wonkiness in terms of uneven loading in different positions, and possibly more strain on your knees or low back. So just make sure that your knee joints are in line with that pivot point right from the get-go. If you're finding these tips helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on future videos. And mistake number four is performing your leg curls with your ankles plantar flexed, or in other words, with your toes pointed. Now, the reason why some people will do this or why you might've seen it being taught in other hamstring training videos is because by flexing the calves, you put them into a shorter and weaker position. And the idea is that that's gonna result in greater tension on the hamstrings. However, because the calves play an important stabilizing role at the knee during a leg curl, you don't wanna remove them from the exercise because then the hamstrings have to take over for that stabilizing function as well. And the the amount of force they can generate through pure knee flexion is going to be reduced. Now you can still stimulate your hamstrings effectively with your toes pointed, okay? This doesn't mean that it doesn't work, but to put the hamstrings in the strongest position to move the weight, keep your ankles either neutral or slightly dorsiflexed. All right, and the last point on the list, I'm not going to call this a mistake necessarily, but it could be a mistake depending on how your overall program is structured, and that's not understanding the difference between a lying leg curl versus a seated leg curl in terms of how they train the hamstrings. Keep in mind that the hamstrings not only perform knee flexion, but they also do hip extension as well, meaning that as the hips flex, the hamstrings are going to lengthen and as the hips extend they're going to shorten so if you're performing a leg curl with your hips in an extended position like with a lying leg curl or a standing leg curl as well then you're going to be training them in a shortened position whereas if you perform a leg curl with your hips in a flex position like with a seated leg curl you'll be training them at a longer length and emphasizing the stretch position and since the hamstrings can produce the greatest amount of force at a longer muscle length the seated variation would probably be the best option overall if we're talking about a direct head-to-head
head-to-head -head comparison. Now, if you're already following a well-rounded hamstring training approach, and you've already got some kind of hip hinge movement in your program, like a Romanian deadlift, that's going to emphasize the lengthened position already. And so this might not matter much, if at all, in the overall scheme. And pairing that up with a lying or even a standing leg curl would probably be just fine. But all in all, what I'd say is that, number one, if you do have access to a good seated leg curl machine, then ideally try to include that at least somewhere in your training program as a whole, rather than just doing lying or standing leg curls exclusively. And number two, if for whatever reason you're not doing a hamstring focused hip hinge in your program, then I'd recommend prioritizing the seated variation if you can. And all the tips that we've covered in this video in terms of proper bracing within the machine, keeping your toes neutral or dorsi flex, knees lined up with the pivot point of the machine, all of that applies to the seated leg curl as well. If you want some more help getting your overall fitness program onto the right track, whether your goal is to gain muscle, lose fat, or do a combination of both, make sure to visit seannell.com slash custom. Just fill out the short form on that page, and I'll send you back a free step-by-step -step training program based on your current condition and goals, along with an easy-to-follow nutrition plan as well. The link for that is in the description box. When it comes to effective supplementation, you can also visit realscienceathletics.com to check out my own line of research-backed, clinically dosed formulas I personally created from scratch to maximize your results. Here are two more videos I'd recommend watching now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you again soon.